It is Wednesday. It means that I'm inviting you to incredible world of Kong Builders, place where we're building stuff um, in cloud native technologies world uh, using uh, Kong tools or some other open source tools. And uh, I will be your host uh, today. My name is Jekka Gamov. I work as a principal developer advocate here with Kong. And uh, if you join us for the first time, Write down in the comments if you can hear us, you can see us. I see at least one person is, is watching right now. Hopefully there will be more because uh, today, as uh, as always, for some reasons, my uh, button is not uh, is not working properly today. As always, I have uh, my uh, friend and colleague from uh, Partner Engineering. Danny, welcome to Kong Builders. It's great to have you here. Hey, thanks for having me back. I'm Danny in the partner engineering team. So I work on stuff like integrations with our cloud providers or some of our other fun technology partners, things of that nature. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and uh, it's it's always a pleasure to have you. Uh, and especially today because uh, before uh, before the stream, Danny just like messaged me saying, hey, I have, a, I have actually like a f prepared for this show. Like I was like, what? It's not how we're doing here. Like no one does that. Um, and she was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there would be some diagramming and uh, maybe even um, some back and forth between us. She will be sending some code snippets. So I will be executing like race cluster and so far and so on. Um, so uh, once again, folks, uh, if you're watching us live, um, uh, please uh, in the comments, like if you're watching us in the LinkedIn, I know that it's, it's becoming a quite popular um quite popular uh destination for uh for many of those uh for, uh, for many of those um streams uh so uh okay great amruta um second time already join us it's great uh, to have you back on the stream um like we start getting some of the uh <laughs> regulars right um need to uh we need to we need to we need to more uh more regulars please uh please 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 join us uh when you join us for uh for the first time as always uh write down where you're coming from um it it, it can be location it can be town it can be country um and um also what uh, your favorite drink today for me today is just a water danny what are you drinking today I'm also drinking a lot of water today, actually. Good question. I'm going running after this live stream. Oh, nice. Uh, are you uh, training for something uh, um, like, or just running? Like just torturing myself. Oh, yeah, nice. It's, is it like a yeah. part of the uh, like a therapy session, right? Yeah, it's like a good way to get out of the house, right? When you work remotely. So I just kind of like go running and now it turned into running every day maybe five six miles oh what are nice. you doing that's pretty good um are you running with the music or are you running this uh uh like without uh without music no uh my husband let me upgrade my apple watch to have the the one where i can have like 
it's on cellular so i get to listen to nice. music while i run yeah really the same nice. same yeah. same here i'm uh um also running with the um the the apple watch um apple watch ultra that uh, can listen to my music some people say that yeah. you should develop this um skill running without uh, music because you should better focus on your breathing focus on some other things and also for therapeutical reasons it's also bad uh, the kind of like you're trying to block some of your um uh, ideas uh, or your your thoughts with some music it's, it's better to focus on those and kind of like use this moment um to what are you thinking about folks like um uh, you running with with music or running without music i'm actually running with music i cannot do anything without music that's um, i it's i can't do it either no, yeah it's not gonna happen many of you should be, figure out by now um like all this like uh, visual and musical effects that we have on the stream you know <laughs> without without music it would be would, would be a would be very very um boring all right um it's great uh, that um we uh we, we're going live uh, right now and the reason why we usually don't do that like you know we're usually trying to keep maybe like a two streams per month with um you know a few weeks apart um but i thought that um last time we didn't talk much uh, about everything so we kind of like okay so let's do a follow-up quickly so the people will have the material um in their hands uh quicker and um yeah, so that's why we, we're coming back. So just to remind you, um, I don't have this like a the visual effect, but I know that Emily, she's in the background and she can post this link somewhere uh, in the comments from our previous episode. If you haven't seen this in the previous episode of Kong Builders, me and Danny start exploring a integration that uh, landed in the Kuma in the Kong Mesh 2.2 integration with the open telemetry format uh for uh for we'll show you how we can enable um things with traces and um today we continue to explore this because some of the things that we we touched uh, we didn't we didn't show the last time and hopefully we will show um this time and at this time uh danny came prepared with some of the uh some of the presentation that i'm passing this uh, microphone to uh to danny Okay, cool. Well, um, the in the first video, we kind of started from the beginning. Well, Vic started from the beginning, and I was really just wingman. I still am wingman. But I was behind on the open telemetry collector, and I wanted to spend a few minutes figuring out what was going on in the space. And I noticed Vic was coming here to uh, look up a lot of the configs. To We're at uh, open telemetry docs page. And so I wanted to kind of like revisit that really quickly so that we're all... Make sure that maybe some of us are new to open telemetry. We're kind of all on the same page before we move on to the next step. So what I learned this morning was it's about receivers, uh, processors, and exporters, and then also connectors, but we're going to ignore connectors and move down to, to services and pipelines and how we hook this all up. And this is about describing about how, what, what the Helm chart needs in order to go from beginning to end, right? So with that, Receivers, processors, exporters, services, and pipelines. And then I'm going to move over to Scala Draw so that we can kind of talk about it from here. Talk about the, uh, the flow of the things. And this is this is the, this is the professional you talking right. You, you're hearing the talking right now, folks. Like she she came prepared with like all this uh, drawing and stuff. That's uh, that's awesome. I drew it out. Danny, some, sometimes <laughs> walk visual. us through this. I mean, I don't know if you're visual, but I'm visual. I'm super visual. Yes, I'm super visual. I'm trying to use like all possible visual tools. Um, I even learned how to do the tools for, um, you know, drawing on my screen when I'm doing this type of uh, live cast. So, uh, but Excel draw, Excel draw, it's it's great. Um, it's a great tool. Love it. Um, I I love this kind of like a hand written style. So I do too. Yeah, it's, it's been it's, a go-to cool. lately. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so the OTEL collector, we've got receivers, exporters, processors, and pipelines. So inside receivers, wait, I have a cheat sheet here, so let me look at this. Receivers where we define any data that we want imported into our OTEL collector. So we've got different types of receivers. We've got OTEL, we've got Jaeger, Prometheus, Zipkin, and a lot of other options. I'm just kind of concatenating here. 
So the first so thing we do in the Helm chart. Essentially, it's some yeah. sort of kind of like a like a listener that's uh, exposed by this collector and something um, systems will push some data into this receiver. So for from perspective of uh, open telemetry collector, it is a um, uh, it's a push, right? It's a push or pull, I'm pretty sure, in the docs. Do you want to check? We can check real quick. If we go to receivers, a receiver, which can be push or pull based, is how data gets into the collector. Okay. I That's think it depends on the type of receiver. Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe, for example, like Prometheus was is originally a pull. Okay. Next. So that's a receiver. And then processes were optional. So once you get data ingested into the hotel collector, then you can kind of transform it. And that's what process is for. And you don't necessarily need to use it if you don't plan on doing any transformation, like to a different format or things of that nature. But that's what a processor is for. Yeah. The beauty of this, um, um, of the processor, I think here we're also using this as a kind of, um, uh, we're not sending each and every metric immediately. Uh, we use the processor to to batch things, as far as I can tell. So it's kind oh. of like a creates a um, set of um, records that after that we were pushing um, towards the, the the exporters. I did not. So because that. if we open um, if we open our the, 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 the where's my open telemetry that we uh, that we did. Um, and I switch back to, to my screen really quick. So yeah, we use these processors that essentially default batch uh, processor that we can also configure um, how these metrics will land in into exporter. So is that like a best practice? We should just kind of consider batching best practice with the processor. <laughs> <laughs> so in previous life, um, in the previous life, I was be uh, I was like always uh, streaming so some folks um who um, know from my my previous life was all about data streaming kafka and all this type of stuff um i was like always be streaming however sometimes um the your your system where you you know placing your records needs to support streaming so for example in the kafka situation the streaming would be um there's never push so kafka itself yeah. provides you with this kind of the way how the data would be like a natural mm. yeah you're right kafka is also a receiver so it kind of may yeah. depend yeah right so essentially saying. it's kind of like it's a pipe but batching here is actually a very good um uh, very good um thing to use because first of all uh there's some situations where the systems that will be receiving the, that exporter will be um talking to might have limitation on api calls i don't know like maybe you <laughs> maybe you tw yeah. uh, posting this in twitter and the, there's an exporter that we're posting in twitter and the last week um twitter has a little bit of uh, meltdown <laughs> and uh, <laughs> rate limiting it was exceeded for um uh, for certain tweets but hey you know i sorry for that couldn't resist the spun <laughs> you know what we need to do danny so what what we need to do we need to do uh, write down in the comments if you will enjoy this type of show. So we're gonna start like after maybe in a few weeks we're gonna start a new show where we're gonna be demystifying all things rate limiting. We're gonna we're gonna oh, break down the things. Ask you about that. Yeah, rate limiting. I want to do that. On uh, ingress rate limiting between the services, global rate limiting across the mesh. So we can talk about different algorithms. We can bring different uh, configurations where the rate limiting can be stored in memory and Redis. So write down in the comments if you would enjoy this type of show here at Clone Builders. Here's, you know, I'm full of uh, cool ideas. <laughs> yeah, I was actually thinking about that this, this morning. I was doing a bunch of... Uh, you know, I was like doing this open telemetry, but then I was like also just kind of stressing over rate limiting and navigating that space as well. So I, I'll per perfectly honest, it's on my mind. I'm ready for yeah. it. Yeah. So in this case, um, in this case, like back to the topic. So essentially the batching prevents us to um, not send every, uh, every metric and uh, maybe um, use the bandwidth more efficiently so i would say the batching is the best practice it's good practice here in the open telemetry collector and every um every docs that i've, I've seen um and we potentially can also 
talk to some of our SRE teams here inside the clunk and uh, what's, uh, if they're using something like this, maybe they're also using like some batching strategy. Um, this this thing mm -hmm. needs to be also tuned based on your environment and the rate of your uh, metrics. So, um, oh, here we go. Like uh, we, we're getting some some responses. Uh, people mm -hmm. already would love uh, would love to hear some of the le rate limiting session. Yep, that's um, that's a cool idea. Um, all right. Uh, sorry for uh, interrupting you, Danny. You can continue with uh, no with your flow. This is a this is good. So we've got receivers. We need to ingest uh, different formats uh, and different types of. I don't want to say different types of, well, we've got traces, metrics, logs, different types of information. Data, I guess we'll say. data, events. Data, um, events from our different, from our different endpoints. It could be microservices. It could be Envoy. It could be Kuma. Okay. So we've got to define those receivers and what types they are. So in this case today, we're, we're, we're focused on OTEL and then it gets to the collector. We just talked about processors and why you may want to use batching. And then the next thing we need to define are exporters. So where exactly you want the data to be funneled to for like the back end. And so in our case, and there's different types of exporters, Otel, I could put the same thing, Otel, Jaeger, Prometheus, Zipkin. But today we're going to be, I guess we're going to be using Honeycomb still, I presume. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which so I thought was pretty cool. In it, it's, it allows us not to focus much on actual infrastructure to for ingestion even though even though we could use things um like jaeger yep. um, that i usually use for my demos um, um we could That's continue to, to use honeycomb we're gonna use uh, we can use the data dog in the uh, maybe maybe in the in the future so i also did the stream where i showed how to use the data dog and gateway um in all these uh, traces yeah um one last thing that we also before we jump into um into configurations and things like that so the number four um the policy that uh we defined would be created on the mesh side of things so essentially in um you don't have to use service mesh for uh in order to open telemetry to work um in order to work this in your application you need to instrument your application by bringing open telemetry libraries uh, because you need to um, encode and decode, probably decode your um, events that happen in your application into open telemetry format. Uh, you can do this manually, or you can just use libraries that are already doing that. And uh, the huge difference that, or I like to say this as a benefit, um, even though I'm a huge uh, kind of like a library buff and the. Uh, if, if library can do something for you, just not reinvent this yourself, just like use the library. However, your microservice will not become, will become not so micro anymore if you're trying to put just, you know, too many libraries there. And also taking care of the things like versions of the library, different versions of the microservice will need to have either <clears throat> concerns around compatibility of these libraries. So those libraries will have same capabilities across not only versions, but across different platforms and languages and things like that. So with Service Mesh, since we're running this on the side of uh, data plane, so data plane will be running alongside with the application. So application doesn't have to include this, uh, those libraries. Um, your code doesn't require to um, do anything specific, even though you want, you still can. Um, and also, um, uh, the data planes will be measured by uh, by control plane uh, and versions and the version of the libraries and integrations and all those kind of things um, will be available. And more importantly, that the policies is a declarative way to um, to have this configuration. So you don't have to each and every application will include like configuration of itself. You can you can you can you can change those policies based on whatever use cases suit, uh, suits to, to your needs. So um, so let's see uh, if we still, uh, let's see if we still have my, um, my cluster is up and running. Uh-huh, switching the screen. So just to refresh, what do we have here? Um, we do have uh, two applications. One is a meeting application, and that application is the work application. Um, when we click in work, we go into meetings, and on the meetings, we're going to sleep. 
and we have a gateway. Uh, gateway uh, Kuma has built-in gateway. We're not we're not gonna uh, bring the the big guns here, even though um, the con also capable of working with Kuma. Uh, and when I click, when I click, when I uh, when I call this uh, when I call the service. I will just go send. So what we'll call it will call um, gateway. It will call a work application. Work application will call um, repeat on the interval. We'll just create a little bit on traffic side of things. And inside my um, uh, honeycomb, we see the last 10 minutes. Uh, we see some requests coming. And we will just see by status codes 200. So things are getting there. good. Yes, we're seeing um, traces. Yeah. We can do what we can do before we jump in this. Um, in my, um, let me show you. Kuma. Kumo for Java, uh, previously known, Kumo for Devs, previously known as a Kumo for Java developers. Um, it's just a different screen. Where's my, oops. Too many windows, uh, very difficult to, too many windows, difficult to control those. Um, I would like to uh, introduce, I would like to introduce some of the failures. So in for this, I do have, um, I do have a the failure fault injection here. Um, fault injection is the policy that allows to specifically inject some of the problems. And 50% of requests will uh, fail, and 50% uh, of requests will report status 500. So um, if I will apply this, um, pim, pim, pim. I would go in, into mesh and I'll just do apply.yaml. Fault injection was created. So we're expecting that now I have uh, only one meeting or two meetings instead of four because uh, we go into every meeting. Every meeting will include uh, four calls for meeting. Each call will include uh, 250 milliseconds of delay. So total one second. So the beautiful thing about um, tracing is that we immediately can uh, detect some of the failures. Specifically here, we can see two, two codes and we start collecting this information and we can immediately react in the um, on our dashboard. So uh, if I would like to go instead of status code, I can say have a dashboard that will do say errors and uh, group by error so error that 11 and we can we can get some of the additional information hopefully uh yeah so we we do have a uh, we can we can we can see where where the problem is happening so why there's two things that are important to point out in this particular scenarios first one is that Traces allows you to see the problems in uh, in interaction. How like where's these problems will happen? Um, because we in we included this uh, error between two specific services. So when the request will go to meeting service, uh, we're gonna fail uh, fifty percent of requests. Another thing that uh, I want you to point out is that having the policies like fault injection, it's not only useful for uh, for demos and showing how you know how you can have the errors. There's a concept, Danny. Do you know this concept called game day? Isn't that associated to chaos engineering? Exactly. Yes, you're right. So essentially, there is a concept where teams of um, of uh, site reliability engineers. Uh, let me put the some some so cool graphs while we're talking about the stuff, so we can see these errors. Also, um, the teams of uh, site reliability engineers they performing these tasks 
about simulating how the system will behave in situations where, say, we we can create few scenarios for our game day, how we're going to expect system to behave. Specifically, we want to know that our alerting system will notify us if 50% of requests will start failing. So that's the assumption that we can put as a, as a kind of test scenario. And we, using the tools like fault injection for service mesh, we will be able to simulate this. And uh, one of the assumptions, one of the results of this can be, oh, yes, our system behaved exactly as we planned. So uh, we got uh, notifications, we got the logs, and it's all good. Another output of this uh, exercise could be, oh, now we know that some of the systems uh, that uh, we didn't know previously actually depend on another system. And when we introduce this, uh, like, uh, failures, we now see that our one of the microservices is not resilient enough. Maybe it doesn't uh, uh, properly handle all these errors. Maybe it's properly handles and not log those errors. So using the concepts that can declaratively inject some of the failure scenarios and have a constant observability of the things, uh, I think it, it, that's the mm -hmm. that's the beauty that uh, your uh, infrastructure can provide. One of the things mm -hmm. that um, I like to... And also we can see probably service name. Yeah, it's a service name that uh, throws these, these errors. Um, another thing that um, I like to say about service mesh, it is not for technically for developers, even though we're trying to talk to developers about this, but service mesh is for people who are building platforms, like you're building the application. No one is building application anymore. Everyone's building platform. So service mesh provides you with the capabilities to build a kind of uh, platform on top of your platform, your software-defined network platform where everything is configured and uh, and the security is declarative, um, everything is automated, you can um, inject failures, you can um, control the traffic um, by just like uh, implementing different, uh, different policies. So that's kind of like um, a little bit more on the convers conversational um, side, side of thing of this, uh, of this stream. So if it's not for developers, what would you want developers to know? Um, it is for developers, but uh, different type of developers, like a platform, uh, platform engineering developers. Okay, so let's see. There's some question. Uh, what's the difference between using? Um, um, let me stop the insomnia, and we can we can talk about this. Open telemetry, open telemetry. Yeah, is so on. like, um, and we will bring the comments in a second. Where is it? Yep. Um, yeah, we talked about this in the very beginning, uh, Danilo. Like, what's the difference between using service mesh with the open telemetry or using open telemetry out instrumentation for the services? Um, it's both. It's just like you have a uh, integration on outside of your service and you have a uh, something that you need to compile and put this inside your service so it's just a matter of you know what, uh, what style you prefer yeah got yeah, it libraries Good essentially question. um yeah we, great question and um let's uh let's continue digging so now okay so we go in into so now, now we also want to bring the um, the logs inside um, inside our system. So we want the, the outside of our system. So the ex, ex, uh, extract the logs from um, from the services and push them into uh, into Hanukkah. Now, so let's see configuration. So we we're going to be using this mesh access log. Previously, there was a traffic log policy. Now we're going to be using like a mesh access um, uh, access log to to configure uh, one of the formats. Blah blah blah. We're interested in the, in the, in the configuration. So that's our 
log outgoing traffic for specific front-end version to back-end service. We're interested on log all incoming and outgoing traffic. That's what we're going to be. Oh, interesting. That's what we're going to be using. Um, we're going to be using uh, open telemetry as a backend to do this. So let's, let's copy paste this into. Okay. So we're going to do while hotel mesh. So let's take a look. What do we have here? So um, default mesh. Cog mesh namespace is wrong. We don't need this. So delete this section if you don't want to log incoming traffic. So why we would we want everything? Uh, and we uh, let's let's keep the comments. So now we're going into backends, and for the backends, the list of the possible backends available here. Um, we're looking for open telemetry. So we're going into backends. Okay. Uh, obviously, need to fix the YAML um, indentation. So we're going into open telemetry and point type, open telemetry. Endpoint. Uh, what did I what did I break? Backends. Okay. What is happening? Um, it needs to be huh, I don't know. It says from target ref target ref and default should be aligned. Looking at the sample. Wow, it looks is hmm. from so two. Two, uh, two needs to be aligned with from, yeah. That looks right. Okay. No. But, but, but what? Line five. The namespace. Kong mesh it, does, system. it doesn't matter because those resources usually, um, those resources usually uh, mesh white, not the namespace white. So oh, let's fair. take a yeah. look. Um, that's our open telemetry backend that we're going to be using. We know we already configured this and we know that it works. Um, YAML. It's always YAML. Okay. <laughs> it's true. We're going to be using this fella. So now we expect this policy. Uh, we're going to go into the Kong Builders folder. Wrong folder. Number six. Okay. So just do with the hotel. Um, I should just log. Okay. A reference error. Mesh X logs version cannot handle as strict coordination and no field spec to zero backends. Um, hmm. That's the, my lame um, YAML thing. So let's take a look one more time. What's the backends type open telemetry. Okay. Type open telemetry endpoint uh, goes type. Oh, backends yeah. is indented. Yeah. It's always great to have this. Um, I have this like a rainbow. Um, it's called the rainbow brackets highlight thing uh it 
Okay, so namespace clone your system is not file. You're, You're in right. IntelliJ, right? No, yeah. You were right, mm. Danny. Um, when namespace. We namespace, yeah. It's just like default or whatever. It's just going to go to default. Okay. Uh, admission hook validation cannot be created in the system and space Kuma system. Okay. Um, we will be a little bit more... Um, I forgot to um, to open um, uh, all and service. We're going to do, where's the control plane? Kuma system control plane. Um, mm, port four. Just to, just we can see UI. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Five. So we're gonna do default mesh. Inside default mesh, we're gonna have policies. We're looking for mesh access log and the C affected data plane proxies. So those two data plane proxies should start reporting. Let's see if we can have this inside the um, inside the honeycomb. So we have events and um, that's the spans. Let's see how we can see. Um, uh, honeycomb open me three logs so do we need to configure anything specific here I thought you need to configure the pipelines the service pipelines for the different data types so it knows to send it to honeycomb so we already have this configuration for Carnicom. That's what I'm trying to see. Do I need to um um do I need to actually But in the pipelines it has three different subsections. It's got one for traces, metrics, and logs. Oh, I thought they would be three Yeah. So Not receivers, processors. Oh yeah. Ah, okay. Yes. Okay. I see what you're saying. Okay, let's do this. So yeah, because you just we, got the traces, yeah. Um, so we can do. Technically, I think that should do the thing, right? So it potentially should so. use the same thing we're gonna do in Honeycomb and endpoint batch. So. They have examples of like uh, getting all the logs from Kubernetes events, which we're not gonna do this. Okay, let's try. Let's try this one. Um, where are we? Um, Elm upgrades my telemetry collector with the values. Good. We're going in to. Let's see, collector, getting something. Okay, log collector. Let's see if there's anything else we need to do. Open telemetry logs. Let's see if we're getting any, any data here. So now how we can see traces. Uh, which I'm, I'm I'm looking which um which honeycomb thingy will allows me to see the logs. Yeah, good question. And also, let's see if we. It's the logs. Uh doesn't show all the um all the things ah because we're not generating any traffic <laughs> yep. Sorry. okay okay we'll start getting some information see 
Vlogs, quarter type name, of vlogging, vlogs. Cool. Okay. Cool. Let's see if um, if the honeycomb UI will will change somehow. Total events. Let's see recent events. So we're getting traces. It's all good. Um, how we can see total errors? Is there anything on our boards? Maybe. No. I need to create the. Uh, Twelve minutes ago, that's looks like a trace, so it's not like a super fresh one. Query. I was wondering if we, we should have um um less than minutes. It's still getting some of the some of the data status codes. Everything works. Where this uh, where it, where it puts the uh, logs? I'm interested. It clearly works. You see, there's a uh, logs, um, logging severity number unspecified. So good, 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 good. Yeah, that's the that's the log. That's the that collector logs. Okay. Yeah, that's the 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 log of the collector. I wonder if you need to make a dashboard. Ooh, how'd you find that? Logs. So like say data. what I know about those logs. So where's the uh, 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 uh let's see. Let's um let's let's see what kind of this we, we created the log, structured log. Um body six okay. Okay, so it just like I uh, change the structure. Um, I'm wondering, okay, so applications, blah, blah, blah. Then run your application, uh, logs, can you copy like it in a data set that matches your configuration? Okay, let's see. We have a data sets, home. Uh, Where's our data sets? Data set settings, that's the uh that's the we're getting data here let's see maybe we do have uh, some comments about this no 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 comments um mm -mm. no one is uh uh the one to hang out with us uh let's see service map slo that matches your configuration service. Can I, I was wondering if I can switch to kind of like a to pro without entering credit card, just like kind of try, try. Oh out. yeah. No, is it possible? Maybe it's maybe it's a, let's see. Uh, view and compare plans. Pro open telemetry support, instrumentation options, and to do, 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 do. triggers distributed tracing bubble up. Detail racing chart. Uh, so it really doesn't matter. I think it's all the events that um, that we sent here. I think I'm missing. I just like I'm one uh, one okay. click from <laughs> from discovering this thing. So we do have a traces. Why we don't see? Can we query for something? Let's try to do the show requests. But that's the that's the stuff. Oh, I'm interested. Okay, so maybe let's let's try to do another thing. So we're gonna usually um, the. the traces can be correlated to some some log information maybe there's a there's a way how we can get the logs from from the particular uh
you know, kind of like when when you look into yeah, this yeah, yeah. errors, you can have like a lock that allows you to drill down into. Um, so let's see what kind of like a log information we can extract from application. Work. Uh, going to going to meeting. Okay, that's the that's the log that we're looking for. <laughs> that was so stupid. Um, yeah, so let's do Quiddy. <laughs> uh, oh, suggested queries. Hmm. That's the raw data. Results, metrics, metrics raw data. Raw data, that's, I think that's the, you know, the traces Trace. that we're getting. Yeah, the trace. But how we can see a log in. Uh, since element for logs. Send data to Hanyuko. Okay, working with your data. Let's see. Um, and specifically, we would be interested in. Uh, query examples, explore trace data. I'm curious if it's something that's uh, um, something, let's see, log. But a trace isn't going to have an error message, right? There isn't an error ex error analysis example. Existing logs. Source, open teleconnector, each receiver, zones, options. Um, um, let's take a look. Do we have exporter? Yes, we do have exporter. That's the, the honeycomb exporter. We have a logging, uh, ones. Um, let's, you know, as, as usual, let's do, let's bounce it. <laughs> Always helps to, you know, try to turn on and turn off. Um, So let's see if it's actually connected to something somewhere. That's the log, exporter type, mesh access log. Okay. Cluster name, even though maybe there's not correct cluster name. So the, the, the collector is working. Collector does something. And I don't see any other errors here in terms of... Um, I think we're mm. missing something like very simple. Mm. New query. Or like raw data. Okay. Quitting metrics. I like um, I like how the Loki does the thing. It's just like immediately all the all the logs are there. 
Yeah. I feel like they're there. So there's tons of data. There's a tons of uh, uh, tons of uh, data. So we, we need to. So next time we need to bring the expert in the in the in the honeycomb. So they will uh, tell us what we're doing wrong with the uh, with our with our thing. So we have a span. How we can get down to like down to unknown log source? Okay, unknown log source. Okay, we're getting something. Okay, let's see. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. How did you do that? <laughs> Unknown log source. Let's see a raw data. Mesh access log. Yep, that's our guy. Cool. Okay. It looks there's a question from Nikki in the chat. It looks like the hotel pieces. Uh no no no. We already changed that. Yeah, we um yeah. We already changed that. We we already figured out. So it looks like it just was a like uh, we were looking at the wrong place. Um, now let's take a look. So we have some data here. Um, now let's try to. Let's try to. Definitions. But you're not wrong. Yeah, it still needed. Metrics. We did need to add that section, but we got it. We got it better. Yeah. So just to to show this, um, in our mesh uh, access log, yeah, we changed this to open telemetry. The, our in cluster thing. Um, Okay, so five seconds. Board must be part query must be named retention usage. So we're going into queries and let's show requests. Okay, um, and can we do raw data? How we can dig into deeper? So all Let's see, and timestamp, we have it, we have all the fields. Um, I'm wondering, we like, there's yeah, log Yeah, you can name. like see the actual log. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. We have, we have some data. We have, uh, we have something here, but, uh. Hmm. Curious. Yeah. Not two hours. Let's ten minutes. Uh, looks like hours. No, like uh, the data that was sent. Uh, let's see. Yeah, cause it just started. Okay, let's let's take a look. I'm just like clicking around. I'm just trying to see all data sets. But why it is also unknown? I don't know. Mm. I wonder if we're like missing an annotation or something. Yeah, it's, it's not the count. Visualize. We want to do not the count. We want to have. Well, at least it works. It sends some data. We see some data is coming. Um, I am trying to see if there is anything there.
that can tell me what is going on here. Um, let's see how we can copy how we can copy it to the. Oh, did you app. do? Uh, I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. Yeah. Yeah, in the exporters, there's the X Honeycomb dataset. Yeah, it's the name name of the data set for for this. Um, yeah, I think that's probably why it's no thinks it's unknown. Ah, okay. So what I can do? Like, I think you could just fill it in with anything, maybe. Um, because it just says use your preferred data set name here. So I feel like you could define what the data set is. Something like this. Yeah. Um, there was another link that uh, Nikki sent. So open to all respects, protocol exporter, and point URLs for okay. So let's take a look. What are we talking about here? Open telemetry. So we're talking about what? We're going into um spec. Protocol exporter. We're talking about to. For some reason, I cannot copy link from. Uh, oh, that's weird. Docs. Uh, we're going into docs specs. Specs. Hotel. Protocol and exporter and. Um, we're talking about what endpoint URLs for where is it? Specification. Oh, I see. Yeah. Exporter. Go down to the endpoint. Yeah, right there. Based on the environment above, oh, 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 TLP HTTP export must construct URL for each signal. So, logs, okay. Ah, okay, interesting. So, okay, so let's try this. So inside here, we just do something like this, right? That's what the, um, but that doesn't make any sense because it is a um, gRPC. With gRPC, there's no such thing. Or it is. I don't think it is. Yeah, I don't no, think. Yeah, I don't think it is. Yeah, you're right. I don't think it is. I don't think it is. Uh, I don't think. Um, the problem is that let, let's see if uh, um, if our change will help um, the one that uh, data set name that we change. At least we know that uh, the things what we're doing and data is is coming from um, from right place. Are you sending it. requests though? Yeah, we still, we still, we still, we still sending. Um, thing that we always can do, just like, because I feels, I f it feels like Helm is ignoring me and is not uh, balancing the pods, so I need to do this myself. Mm. 
Ok. Uh huh. So our configuration is actually does some something, um, hmm. and we're getting this as a as a as a data set for for our recent nice. events. Okay. So here's the thing that we're getting: the mesh access log. Um, let's see. Maybe we're not sending enough information here. So let's see in the configuration file what we can what we can configure. Um. Policy easy setup access log for ah, it's an access log. It's just like it's not the oh, getting. it's the access I'm, log. Uh, it's you need uh, to change something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not like I'm getting the logs of the system. Okay, so let me see. I'm being dumb. Um, but wait. Uh, Traffic log. That's the traffic log. What this is what I was using to collect all this information. Um, and also, see, there's a there's a config that we we might want to to tweak. So let's take a look. Ah, oh, also, I do have a. I also have a working config. Let's let's see how the big. All right, so some uh, we might not send enough data. So uh, Kuma gives a full control over the format of the access log. Shape of the single record defines by template. And, and for example, start time, Kuma service, Kuma destination, Kuma duration. So it is not, uh, it's not capturing the log of the system. It captures the log how one system calls another system. Um, so we can use this um, format and attributes. That moment when you kind of like uh, realizing this Uh, remember this um, uh, yeah, Princess Bride moment. You keep using this word, but uh, I don't think you, <laughs> you know <laughs> what this actually means. Like you keep using the word the uh, log. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That that's the good. <laughs> end point. Let's see. Uh, Attribute is key start time. And also. Um, so yeah, data is there. Data we, we send the data. Uh, we might need another stream to to figure this out. But hey, um, <laughs> it's connected. Yeah, update. Um, where is it? Uh, Tight. Our system. Yeah. Less ten minutes. Um, so yeah, so so we we were able to send the data there. So data is coming, and uh, this is the access log from one service calling to another service. Um, we will be able to get. Uh, so in this case, um, where's the query assistant? Where's this uh, uh, latency? Whatever, just. Yeah, like showing something <laughs> so um it, uh, apart from the traces we have also access log to the thing um i will explore how like i definitely i've seen that uh in the past uh, the service mesh was collecting the logs inside my um let's start your mesh yeah so mm. suggested queries count of events it's not interesting uh, latency distribution by status code let's see Um, let's do all data sets. Let me see distribution by status code. Okay. And status code, why? The status code should be 
uh, group by status code. Uh, we don't have status code. Status code comes from mm, 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 mm. Mesh Gateway, maybe? Where's the status code? Why I'm not seeing my status code, meaning work application? Let's see. Is it on the... Mm. Okay, that's better. Um, that's that's better. Uh, and I don't think the cog version is an issue. It's just a comment. Need to switch cog version. I think the cog version is okay. We have the data no, there. No, no, I think with the yeah. <laughs> no, I think it's kind of like a hey. I saw you guys doing stream. I need to switch version two point one to three point three to cog if it's possible. Um, in order to do this, uh, we do have a docs for that. If you go into Kong, there should be something like a gateway and oh, uh, oh, oh. where's the search migration? Um, some sort of migration guide doesn't have it. I think it's upgrade for mesh. I think it's a key term. Uh, if we go in into Kong production, there's something like upgrade and migration. So. Um, if you want to go and learn how you can upgrade your conk, um, here's the answer for you. 2.1 to 3 point. 2.x, 2.7. Is it po direct upgrade possible? No. So, dear Sher uh, Sharan, you can go and uh, look up in uh, documentation. So you need to upgrade at least to version 2.8 uh, first. And after that, upgrade to version uh, whatever version you, you need to have. So, because there's some breaking changes in the protocols and things like that. So, um, I still consider this as a successful stream. I still consider this as a thing that uh, that works great, uh, even though uh, we 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 learn something. I learned something that uh, the logs actually not the what uh, I was expecting it to be. Uh, we need to uh, go a little bit deeper on this one, but I really like that uh, exploratory uh, thing. So maybe next time, next time I need to bring some from the Conicomp. Like I need to go and reach out. So hey, so we're doing this like uh, open telemetry thing that we know jack zero things, um, <laughs> <laughs> and that would be great to have an expert. In, in, uh, <laughs> Uh, we we experts in uh, in APIs and gateways and things like that, but some other things, it takes time to 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 master. Um, <laughs> dear friends, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I remind you that uh, I have today a fabulous uh, Danny from Partner Engineering, uh, and uh, it's always great to to have her as my uh, co-pilot here. Uh, next time, join us because she will have an upgraded setup. Um, we already kind of. Uh, uh, the, the shield already received uh, huge, huge upgrades for the camera. Uh, so the next time you will see it's coming. better picture quality. Um, you This time you see already upgrade. We showed you diagrams. I will show you some of the, um, <laughs> some of the prep uh, <laughs> before we're doing this. Um, write down in the comments if you still, um, if you're still interested in this thing that I was talking about around. Um, um, doing some cool stuff with the rate limiting, kind of like dissecting the things and uh, um, from from smaller, start building something smaller, um, maybe starting from the rate limiting across the service mesh and gradually expose this to gateway and controlling all the things and maybe with all the things, how to do like observability. So that's just idea. I'm just throwing some crazy ideas in the air and see what sticks. Um, I really hope um, that we will get some of the responses from the community. Danny, do you have any last words before we part? No, this was great. I learned a lot and I had fun. All right, uh, check out some of the uh, some of the recent blogs from Danny in the in the conghq.com slash blogs. Uh, she, she, she's constantly writing something new. I always uh, okay. enjoy reading this. Um, and uh, as always, I am uh, Victor Gamov, and uh, you should have a really good day. And I'm really wishing you a good day. Me and Danny wishing you a very good day. Stay, uh, stay tuned for next episodes. Uh, enable notifications on our YouTube channel, and I uh, will see you on the next one.